Hi there, uh, this is the second video for work energy methods and in this video I'm going to discuss uh, a fairly common use of the work energy methods. Uh, it can be used to determine uh, matter-of-fact uh, instances and also uh, show the intertwine between elevation and uh, the kinetics of the problem. So uh, let, let's just dive right into a problem. I'm going to draw us a quick problem here. Let's imagine that we have some slope that goes down and then back up. Let's label each of them. I'm going to label this first spot up here as A. I'm going to label this second spot down at the base here as B. I'm going to label the final spot as C. Okay, so first thing we should realize is that there's no kinetic friction or anything like this, so we don't need to uh, be concerned about resistance to motion along the path. We don't need to be worried about that. This is frictionless. But what we will need to know first of all that this distance right here to the B level that is 20 meters and the distance from C down to B is a displacement of uh, let's say 10 meters and the mass of this object moving from A, B to C the mass is equal to, let's say, 100 kilograms. Okay, so now we know that it equals 100 kilograms. We have this situation. Let's calculate A first. What do we know about A? We know that the velocity. We know that the velocity at A is equal to zero. We know that mm, the height of A, the Z of A, is equal to 20. And we're also um, in 20 meters, that is. And we know that, uh, you know, we're on Earth, so we know the acceleration and all that. Let's just say any given situation total energy is going to equal potential energy plus kinetic energy. Let me zoom in here. So we know this for a fact. Kinet potential energy plus kinetic energy is the total energy of a given situation. Uh, I don't know, sum of E. Now mind you that this is just for dynamics. There are there is a much larger equation that has to do with sound, has to do with heat, and all these things, and they all contribute into into it. But for dynamics, we're able to cancel all that out and just focus on potential and kinetic energy. So let's work this out. Okay, well the potential energy equals m g h which is equal to the mass which is going to be a hundred kilograms g which is going to equal 9.81 meters per second squared and h which is 20 if we work this out it's going to equal mm, 19,620 and that's joules. Okay, well, what about the kinetic energy at point A? Well, we know that kinetic energy is, we know that kinetic energy is one half mv squared. We know that m v 
squared. So if V is equal to zero, as it is with point A, then we know that the kinetic energy is going to equal zero. So the total energy for this instance is just 19,620 because this portion, this portion right here, the kinetic energy, is going to go to zero. Okay, so the total energy is 19,620. Well, what does that translate? when we hit point B. What do we know about point B? We don't know the velocity of point B, but we do know that Z of B is equal to zero. This is our reference point, essentially. Okay, so I'm sure we can work something out in terms of the math here. If the total energy at A is 19.620, then all that energy, assuming it's frictionless path, all that energy must go into the kinetic energy at point B. Okay, so that means that will equal kinetic energy, or one-half M, which is 100, v squared. And when we solve for that, v is equal to, just doing the math for us, v is going to equal to 19.81 um, meters a second. Now, I just made up these numbers, but um, because that's a pretty high number. But the concept's there. You have a 220 pound object just cruising down the hill, it's going to pick up some speed, especially when you take away friction. Okay, so now you have something moving that fast. All that energy is going to be retained and it's going to move up to this point C. Well, that C is 10 meters off the ground, so it's going to gain back some potential energy but retain some kinetic energy, so we have to figure that out. Using the same techniques as before, we're going to say that the total energy for basically this problem is 19.620, and that's going to equal a combination of kinetic and potential energy. The potential portion can be calculated as mgh, or 100 9.81 10 and then the other portion is going to be the kinetic energy which is going to be 1 half m oops uh, m 100 b squared okay well I'm going to kind of walk us through and do this uh, equation for us. Let me back up just so you can see it. It's going to be 19,620 equals this big long equation. We're solving for V and the result is just below here. V is equal to 14 uh, meters per second. Notice how even though it went up, half it gained half the height back, half the potential energy back. That, that doesn't mean that it's going to have a linear effect, especially when you're looking at the kinetic energy. It doesn't have a linear effect on what the velocity is. And that's important to realize. Well, anyway, um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, those three different points, uh, this kind of analysis is very common in the engineering world and uh, consequently it's very easy as well. So anyway, I'll leave it to you guys and leave any comments that you may have. Have a good one.